I don't have my Quran. I have it, but I brought out my Bible. <laughs> because I hate the division that is between people who believe in God. It is so sad to see Muslims and Christians and Jews and Buddhists and Hindus and others just killing each other over our misunderstanding of what God revealed. So even though I am a Muslim, and I don't apologize for that, but I am also a Christian too. And I don't apologize for that either. See, when you really understand the book, you don't get thrown off by names. You understand that when Moses and Abraham and all the prophets taught, the same principles that each one of them taught shows that they all taught the same religion. Yes, they did. The Bible says God is not the author of confusion but of peace. So if God is the originator of all these different religions, different names, and people fighting and killing each other, then we would have to charge him with being the author of confusion. But that's not God. That is Satan dividing the people of God from each other so that he can continue to rule by keeping us fighting and killing each other over what we don't understand. So tonight, I'm going to talk out of the Bible because I love the Bible. I love the Quran. I don't know how I could come in a Christian church with a Christian pastor and not speak from the book that Christians believe in. And I'll show you that I believe in this as well. Now, in the book of Matthew, the third chapter, the first verse it reads, in those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In the book of Mark, the first chapter, the 15th verse, John's saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. So repent ye and believe the gospel. Now, what time is fulfilled? And why must those of us in the fulfillment of time repent he wasn't making a statement to a specific group it's everybody there's some repentance here that is due the time that's fulfilled is the time of the rule of satan the enemy of god his time to rule is up so the scripture says god's coming is after the working of Satan. So the time is fulfilled, so a voice must be present to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now something that's at hand is within reach. It's, it's nearby. It's close by. 
It's near in time. It's soon. Oh, that's all right. I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of the kingdom of God. But what is it? What is it? Now, there are many parables that are made in the New Testament of the kingdom of God. I won't go over all of them, just a few, because the parables that Jesus spoke of the kingdom are very, very wise, full of wisdom for those that have a heart to hear. Jesus said, the kingdom is likened unto a man going forward sowing seeds. So you don't have the kingdom without the presence of a man. That's interesting. And this man is sowing seeds. What kind of seed is he sowing? It says some of the seeds fell by the wayside, some fell on stony ground, and some fell on good fertile soil and brought forth fruit. But what was he saying to us? We are not necessarily in the kingdom of God we are a part of the kingdom of this world. Listen good now. And this world is as far away from the kingdom of God as the planet Pluto is <laughs> from the sun. And I think it's 4,600,000,000 miles. And this world is further than that from the kingdom of God. So when a man shows up sowing seeds, he's talking to people who have been victimized by Satan's world. Now the heart, when they hear the word, some fell by the wayside. Some people just don't want the kingdom. They are happy in the decadence and filth of a world gone mad. But there are others who like it and rejoice over the word and want to repent and get their lives together. But by and by, there's some persecution that comes. Because you can't come into another man's world sowing the seed of a new kingdom without that man being upset. Then persecution will follow a true Christian. You didn't hear me. Because if you want the kingdom, then Satan wants to divert you from your desire and make you think you are already in it while you are far from it. Then Jesus said the kingdom is likened unto a mustard seed. And if you've ever seen a mustard seed, it is so, so tiny. But yet it grows into a great tree and the fowl find refuge under its branches. So the kingdom starts very small with a man sowing seeds then it says the kingdom of God is likened unto a man who sowed wheat in a field and then the men in the field fell asleep and an enemy crept in and sowed tares in among the wheat And they asked the master, what, what should we do? Look, 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 there's tears here. Shouldn't we pluck it up right now? The master said, no, leave it alone. 
Let them grow together. Because the wheat and the tear at one point resemble each other. All right now. But in the final analysis, the wheat bears fruit. And the tear gets into its natural work, which is to choke out the life of the wheat. So there's a lot of folks sitting together. There's a lot of folk looking like they belong together. But some are wheat. And some, unfortunately, are tares. But at a certain point, you can't tell the difference because both of them look the same. Now, that's a heck of a picture. Because some of us really think that praising God in word, praising him in song, praising him in dance is enough. And then we continue to live the same old life that the word condemns. So we didn't tear hanging out. Some really want to do better. Some want some inspiration that will give them power over the weakness of themselves and they want to get busy and bring in the kingdom of God. Now, the beautiful thing about this kingdom stuff is one of the uh, Apostles, I think it's Paul in the book of Romans, he said, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, Farrakhan, <laughs> you gonna talk to us about the Holy Ghost? Yes, I am. This minister here, he, some preachers call me a schizophrenic, <laughs> a schizophrenic Muslim because they say he talks more about Jesus than preachers. But that poor boy don't know what he want to be. Yes, I do. I know that the division is hurting us and hurting the world. And it is killing us. And therefore God must send us those who will help us to see the folly of dividing up the family of God by names. I'm a Muslim. This is a Christian. This is a Jew. This is a Buddhist. Oh, we're all different. Oh, really? So as long as we think like that, we really don't understand the value of the prophetic words. All the prophets taught submission to God. All the prophets came with certain eternal truths but on those eternal truths was a contemporary truth to solve a contemporary problem. And what happens is we get lost in the contemporary and lose the value of the eternal principles that undergird all the religions. Now follow this today. If the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Well, then what is the kingdom? Where is it? I would like to know. 
Well, the book says in the book of Luke, neither shall they say lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Now, look at this. Uh, those are some powerful words. You looking somewhere for the kingdom, except where you should look. If the kingdom of God is within you, that means us, all of us. And what happened to it? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that the kingdom of God is a government under the rules and laws of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now we're living under rules and laws, but they're not God's rules. They're not God's laws. They're man's laws, and we are in pain because of injustice. Mm. So if the kingdom of God is within you, and the kingdom is a government under the rule and laws of God, then what is in you? And how did we mess up? the kingdom where heaven is not coming up out of us but hell is coming up out of us how did that happen just follow me the honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that all of us are created by nature to submit to God that's the nature in which we are created in our nature is the compelling force to submit our will entirely to do the will of God so you are automatically by nature warned of the kingdom but something happened that is called original sin Now, I'm in a Catholic church, but I want to say something. Many Catholic theologians believe that the original sin is that human beings are by nature sinful. We don't agree with that, and I want to prove it. The original sin was in the Garden of Eden. But before sin, what was the nature of Adam and Eve before sin? Now, let's reason. God didn't make man and woman sinners. He made man and woman to do like all the planets, all life, everything bows down to the law under which it is created. You are no different from that. But when you deviate yes, from the law of submission to God, then you find another God. Yes. And it is that God that has destroyed the kingdom of God that is within you and me. The original sin happened in the garden. Adam was given direct orders. I mean, I, I, I never heard God talking to me like he talked to Adam. I mean, he said, Adam, 
all these trees in the garden you can eat of the fruit of all of them but this one in the midst of the garden you shall not eat of that direct orders when Adam rebelled that's original sin and original sin began the death of original nature now follow follow this cuz I'm gonna make it real clear by the grace of God when Adam rebelled a whole system or government and world of rebellion against God came into existence though the kingdom of God is within us the scripture says we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity you got to deal with it what sin are we born in some of us think that sex is sin no please I mean uh, No, it is the improper use of sex that is sin. God created sex and the attraction of the male and the female for the procreation of the human species as all creatures procreate their own life. There's nothing wrong with God giving us the ability to procreate another human being that's not original sin that's not what we're born in we're born into a world of rebellion against God and we have been shaped in that rebellion so that whatever God says thou shalt not do man says it's okay help yourself So right now, we are so lost, we really don't know anymore what's right, what's wrong, because the Quran says that the devil will make evil fair-seeming. So we're doing wrong, think we're doing right. So somebody has to come and point out, wait a minute, this is God's rule. This is God's law. This is the standard. How well do we measure up to the standard? Then you can see why John said repent. Because you can't repent if you don't know that what you're doing is wrong. And in this world, wrong is right. And right is wrong. You stand up and preach what God says, well, then you're homophobic. Or, yes, Come on. you're a hater. That's not true. We should love what God loves. And we should dislike what God dislikes, even though we like it. If we like what God does not like, then we're in the valley of decision. Will I do what God wants or will I do what I want? And that's why the kingdom, he says, is not meat and drink. The kingdom is not material. It is spiritual and it manifests in material. And that's why the Bible says, seek ye first. What did it say? The kingdom of God and what? I didn't hear. And all its righteousness. And then all 
things will be added unto you. But we are practicing addition before we practice submission. So you're adding material things to your life, but you're not in sur complete surrender to God. And God is not a liar. He, if you surrender your will to do his will, the things that you seek, the things that you need, even the things that you want, will be added unto you. But don't try adding first. Try surrender first. Now, all right, this gets a little more difficult now. Now, the Bible talks about the Son of Man in the book of Matthew coming out of the east even unto the west. For that's where the carcass is going to be because that's where the eagles are gathered together. It didn't say the Son of God was coming out of the East. It said the Son of Man. And all the time that Jesus was teaching, he never told the people he was the Son of God. He referred to himself as the Son, come on, of Man. But when he questioned the disciples, uh, who do they say I am? Well, evidently he wasn't telling them. Because if he were telling them, he wouldn't have to ask them. He didn't even tell his disciples. He said to his disciples, who do they say I am. Oh, they say you're that prophet that was to come. They say you're this. They say you're that. Then he looked at Peter and said, who do you say I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Now that's the first time it had come out of the mouth of a disciple that this wasn't just the son of man, but he was the son of God. And then Jesus hushed him up. Shh, shh. See, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. Go and tell no man. Don't tell him yet. Because he had a work to do that announcing who he was would have interfered. And even when he was on trial, they say that you are. He, he, watch his words. He was very smart. He learned, I guess most uh, lawyers and liars <laughs> learn how to say, I can't recall. I, I don't remember. <laughs> Jesus was very smart in the way he answered. But now, why is he called the Son of Man? Ever since the fall of Adam, man has fallen. When I say man, I mean woman too. Man and woman. The Bible says, as by one man, sin entered into the world and death came also by sin. All have sinned. Then all have tasted of a certain kind of death. As by one man, sin entered into the world. So by one man, shall all be made alive. Now here comes the son of man. Why is he called son of man? Because ever since the fall of man and mankind, we have always longed for a better relationship with God. We knew we lost it. 
and the death that every human being has suffered is yes we live short lives but that's not the death that the scripture is talking about it's talking about the death of a nature of surrender to God that's your real power and when that nature is put to death then you start leaning in another direction other than surrender to God now let's see if this is true this son of man is produced from the longing of billions of human beings over 6,000 years that wanted to return to God Re renew their connection to the Lord of the worlds and so a man was born from the longing of men and women called the son of man he's a human being you don't look for no spook no spirit ain't nothing coming out the sky to do nothing for you Jesus was a man Adam was a man so the question is who is the son of man he comes out of the east. He's coming west. Well, Paul in his writings on Jesus talks to us about taking off the old man and putting on the new man. Well, who's the old man? The old man is Adam and his rebellion. You got to take off the garment of rebellion and put on the new man and the new man is Christ Jesus and he was perfect in his submission to the father he was so obedient to the father that he could say I and my father are one See? and that's where he wants us to be so we're in a world fashioned by Satan and we have to come out of Satan's world to be a part of the kingdom of God now the kingdom of God is buried under the flesh the nature of God in you is buried under the flesh and fleshly desires so we live in what they call a carnal mind not a spiritual mind a carnal mind carnal means flesh meat so here we are in church or we're in the mosque or we're in the synagogue well what are we here for Are we here for entertainment? Come on, man. Are we here to shout? Are we here to sing the praises of God, but not to resurrect the kingdom that is within us? Come on. What do we come to these places for? Come on. If the kingdom of God is a government under the rule and law of God, the first step is to get the head of your head right. Your head. Now, wait, 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 wait. You know, when you're smoking dope. I'm sorry, I know I'm in church and people don't do those things until they leave. <laughs> but when you want to get your head messed up, you take something to mess up your head if you want to get your head right you got to put the right king on the throne in your dome now, now, now look the king dome of God now who's the king in your dome now look see if you tell me 
Christ is king and you are subservient to the king then your mouth your hands your feet walk speak live the direction of your king don't tell me the Lord is your shepherd and you're looking for a leader If the Lord is my shepherd, I have a leader. I'm not looking for a leader. And if the Lord is your shepherd, you don't need a leader. You got one. You just got to learn how to obey and follow the Lord. That's the king in your life. All right, come on. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of the kingdom of God. I really want to live under the rule and law of God that will bring peace between me and my creator. And it will enable me to make peace with my fellow man. I want to live in a government under the rules and laws of God and his Christ. From the Islamic perspective, when we say Mahdi, we're talking about the same person you're talking about as the Christ. Christ is a, um, a Greek term, but it only means one anointed with power to crush the wicked. That's Christ. Jesus was his name when he first came among us. But when he ascended to the Father, he became the Christ, anointed with power now, where the book says God put everything under him but he himself. So if you're waiting for his return, <laughs> what kind of preparation are you making, chief? You going to come to Christ in a miniskirt? No, 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 serious, I'm serious. You gonna come to Christ with these hip huggers on? Half your belly out, your back. And if you bend over, somebody's seeing what they shouldn't. See, Satan is styling the garment of the women. Knowing that a man can't think right. Looking at the nakedness of a woman Men go crazy even if they in the pulpit. And if you want to stop a man from going crazy, cover yourself. That's protection for the man, but it's protection for you. Man by nature is aggressive. Look at the animal kingdom. You ain't too far off, you know. It takes a lot of development for a man to become civilized enough where he won't disrespect the female. The disrespect of the female sends the nation to hell. Because if you want to raise a nation, you raise it through the woman. And if you want to destroy a nation, you destroy it through the woman. Almost finished. No, no. <laughs> to the women in the audience, there is no great America without you. And there is no great world without you. You fashion the future. That's why. Wise people protect the female. 
Now, on television, they have all these movies about Jesus. Well, we can argue that he wasn't blonde, he wasn't brunette, but whatever, whatever. <laughs> whatever. But when you look at the pictures of Jesus, all the women around him are covered. Have you ever seen a mini-skirted Mary Magdalene? <laughs> Have you seen his mother Mary with a cleavage? So if you're a follower of Jesus the Christ, then the kingdom in you demands that you do not show yourself to the world as a cheap piece of meat for men to ogle over and lust after. He can't build the kingdom with his mind on He, he, he can't do it. He can't. So right now, the kingdom of God is, is gone, man. The way I see the little sisters dressing, the way the stylists are styling them, then the way they put us on television, in the movies, just displaying women in a way that makes them a creature of lust rather than the mother of civilization. So if the kingdom of God is within you, then you have to make a determination when the man of God points out to you, this is right, this is wrong. This is good, this is not. It's not a dictatorship in that sense because you have the free will. You can choose to bring the kingdom forth or you can choose to let life be what it is. The mother of a young man that got shot on a bus is in this audience tonight. And Brother Howard Morgan who was shot 28 times by the police is in this room tonight. What kind of world are we living in? When a man that's in his 20s will see a 91-year-old Caucasian man who was blessed to be able to drive at 91. And this man has no feeling of compassion, but is going to beat down an old man to take his vehicle. An old woman in New York beat down over a few dollars. Look at what is happening to us. Three men come into a bank the other day. Shoot down a young father. Beautiful looking young man. Somebody gets on a bus and shoots down a beautiful young man. Where is the kingdom of God? With churches on every corner, preachers everywhere, but death and destruction has taken over our community. Why are you here at St. Sabina, Minister Farrakhan? Because wherever Christ's name is mentioned, I feel that's home for me. You say, well, what about Muhammad? I say, what about him? I know he was a good man. He was more than a good man. And from him, 
over a billion and a half people have become Muslims. Wait. But some of my brethren feel that if you're a Christian and not a Muslim, there may be something wrong with you. But Elijah Muhammad taught us that a good Christian is a Muslim. And a good Muslim is a Christian. Now how can you prove that? To be a Christian means that you are crystallized into oneness with God following the example of Jesus Christ. That's what it means. Don't wear the cross and say I'm a Christian and you're not practicing Christ-like behavior. Come on now. We've got to get rid of hypocrisy yes, sir. and start being what we say we are, then the kingdom will come without observation. We'll look around and we'll be in the kingdom because all these people in here will be practicing submission to God. Then there's peace in here. There's joy in here. There's love in here. It should be that way in the mosque. It should be that way in the synagogue. So when we come out in the street and you meet a Christian or you meet a Jew or you meet somebody who is practicing obedience to God, you're really meeting your brother. However, if we just use in these terms, to hide our dirty practices. I mean, can you imagine? I'm a Christian. I just put out the funkiest rap song I could think of. Come on. Come on, well, I, I don't know whether it's the funkiest, but it's hard out here to be a pimp. <laughs> That's a kind of rough one, you know. But a man got an Oscar. The highest award you can get in film. Yeah. And a man got it for a song. It's hard out here <laughs> for a pimp. <laughs> now talk to me. And then when they receive the award, they say, we thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus ain't got nothing to do with that. <laughs> Satan made you a millionaire so you could keep on spreading filth and degeneracy to your people. Don't put that on Jesus. Satan is your master. I want you to remember this. Whenever you say you want the kingdom of God, you're saying you want to struggle. That's right. That's right. Satan doesn't like that. Remember that song we used to sing in the church? The devil's mad and I'm so glad because he missed the soul that he thought he had. <laughs> but let me tell you, Satan is in the business of getting souls. I don't feel bad if he got you. But there's still hope. Because you can break that hold that he has on you with drugs, illicit sex, mistreating your females, being other than what your natural inclination is. You can overcome that. We can overcome that. But look at this. Mm. Satan, 
Satan always wants to know what do you want. And whatever you want, he says, I can give it to you. But here's my price. Yeah. There's always a price when you get in bed with Satan. Now Jesus was a man that came into the world to bring a kingdom. It hadn't manifested yet. Satan heard him preaching about the kingdom. So he took him up on the mountain and said, come up here with me. So if he's bad enough to tempt the master, we don't stand a chance, brother and sister. <laughs> this dude takes the master up on the mountain knowing that he was after a kingdom. And Satan said, well, look here. Look at all that down there. That's mine. I give it all to you, Jesus. But Jesus was wise enough to wait on his father. And he said, get thee behind me, Satan. Now, some of us get trapped like this. You get an offer to be an enemy to yourself and your brother to become a betrayer just for a little money he put it on the plate if you ever watch court TV some of the things that you see just blow your mind yeah. that people are so hungry for money that somebody will pay somebody two thousand dollars to get rid of their wife <laughs> and somebody will kill for two thousand dollars you got to be able to say get thee behind me Satan because the price that you're gonna pay is to give up the kingdom the moment you start practicing righteousness you don't know where the enemy is going to show up. Could be your husband. Now listen, brothers. Suppose your wife comes home tonight and says, you know, honey, I was going to wear this miniskirt Sunday. But I think the minister was right. It don't look good for me to be sitting, pulling something down that can't come down. <laughs> so maybe, honey, I want to put on something a little longer. He said, but baby, I like it when you, when you look like that. I want other men to see what I got. That's a fool talking. Because if they see what you got, they can't wait for you to get out the way so they can take what you got. Now, in Islam, there's this talk about jihad. And these Muslims, many of them are going crazy talking about jihad. I am for jihad. Me too. But what is the real jihad? The real jihad is the struggle against the weakness of yourself that will disallow the kingdom of God 
to become manifest. That's the real struggle. Somebody put a bomb on himself and go out, I'm a jihadist. But where's the real struggle? You didn't struggle against the madness of your mind? There is no kingdom without struggle. You can't come to St. Sabina and say, well, I ain't struggling. I'm just coming to church on Sunday. Well, wait a minute. If you're not in a struggle to make yourself better as a Christian, then your coming to church is empty. I don't know whether Father Flager conducts confessions. Well, I don't know. But in a lot of Catholic churches, there's confession. And the Bible says confession is good for the soul, but who are you confessing to? Now, you go, my wife was a Catholic when I met her, and she had to go to confession, and I would go with her. I was an Episcopalian, you know, a little different from Catholics, but. A little step down, you know. <laughs> but my wife would go in, and I don't know what she was saying. <laughs> Hope she wasn't talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> then they would tell us, say, a few, our fathers, a few Hail Marys, light a few candles, put a little pennies or something in, and that's it. And there's a certain peace from confession. Yes, Father, I fornicated. And uh, I keep doing it, Father. <laughs> I, I do want to get better. I want to say a few Hail Marys, a few Our Fathers. Light a few candles. And the person comes out, they feel better. Because confession is good for the soul. But if confession does not lead to repentance, then confession is empty. Because once you've repented, you don't keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. So when John said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Each of us, I'm starting with myself, we have to look at self. Since my nature is submission, what am I doing that is not in complete obedience to God? Then I have to examine myself. Oh, that's minister fire. No, stop, stop, please. Ain't nothing moving holy. You didn't hear me. We're all hopefully striving. For the scripture says, all have fallen short of the glory of God. So because I dress in a robe and have, you know, uh, what do you call it? Staff and, and um, scepter. yeah, scepter. And, uh, and I feel powerful, you know, because people have come out, you know, to hear me. Nobody is worthy of worship but God. Now, listen as I leave you, it really hurts. When you put men up on a pedestal and then find out that they're doing things worse than you or just as bad. So don't worship men. Worship God. 
and Christ never told you to worship him he said follow me and if you follow him you'll be in complete surrender to the father then the kingdom of God will be present in you may God bless us to bring forth out of a fallen humanity the kingdom of God may God bless us in a world of decadence and filth and hatred and bloodshed and war May God bless us to resist the enemies of peace and righteousness. Every time I look at the television and see another soldier dead, 19 years old, 20 years old, 22 years old, 23 years old, on the basis of a lie yeah. children that love their country children that believe in the honesty of their president as their commander in chief go to war killing men women and children and dying themselves for the greed of a few. Yeah. See, this is satanic. Yeah. I don't care how they dress it up. This is satanic. This is mass deception of the American people and mass deception of the peoples of the world. Don't you ever believe that you're living in a democracy. You're living in an oligarchy which is a few ruling the many and deceiving the many into thinking that they have the power to change the reality of what's going on in America. On, I don't care who you vote for. On, They're all the same. Yes, None of them will fail to disappoint you. Whether it's Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, Giuliani, McCain, Romney, Biden, whoever, they're sold to a system that is rotten at the root. You listen to me. They don't want to see the kingdom. They want the greed of their own lusts for oil and power. They want to take the raw materials of the nations of the earth under privatization. They don't want the kingdom. They don't want equal justice for the human being. Three billion people on our planet living on a dollar a day. That's not the kingdom of God. With millions of children being miseducated. That is not the kingdom of God. With the jails overflowing. With American children who are robbed of opportunity. That's not the kingdom. 
And that's why when Jesus stood up and spoke, the poor heard him gladly because they have built their world on the backs of poor blacks, poor whites, poor Hispanics, poor Asians, poor Arabs, the poor of the world support this wicked system that must leave us in order for the kingdom to be established. And so the scripture says, the kingdoms of this world have, not will, but have become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. That means what? That a true Christian ain't with this. A true Muslim is not with this. A true Jew is not with this. We're with something that we have to bring into existence. So a true Christian is ready to be persecuted for the sake of the gospel. I don't think they're going to leave me out here much longer. But it's immaterial with me. As long as I am true to what I believe and refuse to compromise my principles for money, position, then I'll live a man and I'll die a man. It's a terrible thing to live your life and then die a weak thing that compromised your principles for some little job that you got working for Satan. Be a good Christian. Be a good Muslim. Be a good Jew. And the false Christians, the false Muslims, and the false Jews, and the false human beings who use these names to shield their dirty practices will be shown up by those that become the wheat. Then we can look at the tear. And as they're plucked up, out of the house yes, we say thank God that such has been removed from the presence of the kingdom of God so if Satan said well I got a respite and see there's some niggas that are dead they're on a dead level and I will not allow God to raise them to a living perpendicular and stand them on the square. I want to keep them on a horizontal level so that the mark of the beast that is in their forehead and in their hands will show God that they are mine. I beat God. I beat him. I got his people. I went in the Muslim straight path and I made them all deviate. I went in the Christian the straight path of Jesus and I made them all deviate. Come on. Ooh, I made all righteous people do unrighteousness. And so the world is covered with bestiality. There's even human beings lying with animals now. There's human beings like dogs, like snakes, like beasts of prey going after one another, spotting somebody weak, knock them down, take their wallet, kill them. See, that, that's my man, Satan talking. That's my man. I got them all, God. Yeah, but there's a few that he, he ain't got. Come on. Yeah. Come on. And because there's a few 
that he has not got, God will use them to go after those that Satan has got. Remember that song you sing? The devil is mad and I'm so glad that he missed the soul that he thought he had. I came to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad one day. I was dressed, man. I thought I was sharp, brother. <laughs> I had a pleat in my back, you know, and the, and the suit was tailored. It came in at the waist, went out at the hip. I had my bell-bottom yeah. trousers on. Okay. I had a beautiful, you know, yeah. uh, shirt, and my knot was just right, and I had my hanky dipped over, you know what I mean? <laughs> And I came to see my teacher. And he looked at me and said, <laughs> he said, brother, when the devil saw you today, <laughs> he said, Muhammad got his body, but I got his mind. He didn't say no more. But when I left that house, I should have pulled off all them clothes, but, but I didn't have a change. I had to wear them back home. But I never wore that suit no more. And then he told me, he said, brother, he said, the Jews, they use silk mohair. He said, why don't you go and have a tailor make you some silk mohair suits with a vest and your bow tie or your straight tie. And he said, that's the way I want to see you dress from now on representing me. I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. yes, sir. Because, see, what you look like on the outside is really a sign of what's going on on the inside. Some sisters say, well, yeah, I like to dress like this. If the man is so strong, he don't have to be moved by the fact that I'm dressed like this. <laughs> yes, yeah, shut up. Come on now. Be quiet. You know damn well he gonna be moved. That's why before you leave the house, you get in the mirror. Check it out. You're not only checking your backside, but if she walk in and her backside look good, you checking her out too. Then you watching to see if your husband looking. See, oh yeah, the minister shouldn't talk like this. Why the hell shouldn't I? Come on, minister. You don't need nobody feeding you fantasy when you living in a world of reality and you're sucked up by Satan. You need somebody talking to you straight talk. Then you'll be able to walk a straight line on the straight path of God. Now look, I know that God loves you. You are the beloved of God in your crazy condition. It's true. But minister, at the march, is it true that you invited gays? Is it true, minister? I heard somebody on, said on the radio, well, he must have gays in his family. So I have to explain myself. When Tabby Smiley had his forum in Georgia at Bishop Eddie Long's beautiful church, they had a press conference before our part of the show, 
And one of the reporters asked me, can gays come to the march? And I said, of course they can come. Of course they can come. The next thing I knew, Farrakhan has invited gays. Then the gay movement came to Reverend Willie Wilson. You need somebody openly gay on the committee calling the march. So I said, Reverend, tell him. There might be somebody openly gay in the committee. I didn't ask him. I said, the family can come. I said, we got liars in the family. We got thieves in the family. We got pimps in the family. We got hustlers in the family. We got dope dealers in the family. We got ex-cons in the family. We got murderers in the family. I didn't ask you what you do or what you did. Whosoever will, let him come. That's how Jesus called the people. So, can't no adulterer in the house look at somebody gay and say, look at that, look at that man. <laughs> can't some lying thief in the house look at a lesbian and say, she's so off? Jesus said, if you offend in one thing, you offend in them all. All of us got some cleaning up to do because we've been devoured by a power that we were not fully aware of we think we with God we think we're with Christ but we've been deceived by a smart crooked deceiver and he has devoured us and we are definitely his children and his fruit. Some man said to me, we all are the children of God. I said, potentially. <laughs> you ain't gonna put that over on me. That's right. We all are the children of God. Well, if you're the children of God, wouldn't you look like him? Wouldn't you reflect him? We got to go on Mari Povich show and get a DNA test to find out who the daddy is. Oh, you don't need none. I took your DNA today, baby. And God ain't your father. You love him, but you ain't his child until you become one. God has to intervene in your life to make you his own. Now, Christians, I want to say something to you about Jesus as the son of God. See? Now, if God swooped down one night in Palestine and got Mary pregnant from the Holy Ghost and no man ever touched Mary then how could Jesus be an example for us when he came by a way that we didn't come listen mm. see if God swooped down and put something in Mary and she produced the son of God and he said our father then how did I become his father uh, his son when he didn't swoop down on my mother I know to do <laughs> oh I think I do <laughs> now watch watch this pastor See, Paul runs it. 
he said he was the seed of David but he was declared to be the son of God according to the spirit of holiness now let's go back here a minute now I try to be a good father I haven't been as good as I should have been or could have been I was always on the road talking to you spending more time with you than I spent with my children who needed me at home my wife needed me at home but she understood see a man that has a mission he has to have a wife that understands that his mission is the most important thing in his life it is his mission that gives meaning to his life So the woman in his life must become a part of his mission. Okay. Now, as a father, I can teach my children from my knee scripture. As many grandmamas, granddads, mostly grandmamas, took us to their knee and went over the Bible. We sat down at breakfast sometime and mama would have to read the Bible and, and then on Sunday she would take us to church and we would sit on the mourner's bench or whatever and go through what mama was going through because she wanted to bring us up a righteous bringing up. But you see, no matter what mama did or grandmama did or no matter what the preacher says, if God does not intervene in your life, then the spirit of holiness can't be a part of your life unless God makes you his child. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. See, when God makes you his child, you stand out. I don't care where you are, you stand out. Mm. I don't care what the boys are doing. You may try it for a minute, but it ain't your cup of tea because God got his hand on you. Some of us are like that. I know I was. I tried to smoke my little reefer. I tried. You know, I got to hang out with the boys and you know, show them that you know, I'm one of you, but I never was. Mm. My mind was always on another plane, you know. So I smoked the reef, and I didn't like being high. Mm. I drank the alcohol, but I didn't like being high. Ah! I was a young boy. When I got to a certain age, I wanted to experience sex. I'm going to put this in my life story because it, it registered with me. I had my first little sexual relationship with a young lady and like most boys do when they have sex with a young girl they go back and tell their friends yeah. you know what I mean man I, oh I scored big you know what I'm saying <laughs> you say minister you did that hell yeah I did that You think I fell down from heaven? I rose up from hell just like you did. But God from heaven touched me and made me his child. And that's why Satan can't have Farrakhan. Now there are pastors here of different denominations. There are Muslims here from different sects of Islam. There are Indians here, the native people from different tribes. Right? Yes, sir. 
And we all are divided. There you go. Right there. So Satan is having a ball. Yeah. There is a Satan, you know. Yes, right. absolutely. That's right. You can't call us conspiracy theorists. <laughs> because Satan is real. And he's always in a conspiracy finding people he can use to keep people divided so that his world will continue in power. But when the people understand who they are, who Satan is, and he must be made manifest. Oh, you didn't hear me. <laughs> oh, he was. How could he be made manifest? He's a spirit. Mm -hmm. You can keep feeding yourself that if you wish. But spirits inhabit bodies. So the Bible, I think it's in the New Testament. It says that day shall not come except there be a falling away first and the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. See? And then it tells us God's coming. Stop there. Yes. Right. Where you been, God? Mm. That you got to come. <laughs> I thought you were omnipresent. He said, I am. But I gave Satan time. Yes. And I would not interfere with his time. He said, but God's coming is after the workings of Satan, yes, whom he will consume with the brightness of his coming and the spirit of what? His mouth. Well, that's where we're going today. Satan is real. And we're all divided. How could you really believe that you are a Christian and be against your Christian brother Come on. who is of a different denomination? Yes, sir. Now, my brother Lasseter, Lasseter is a Baptist. That's right. But Jesus said a lot of I am's. In the Bible. Yes. Come on. In the gospel. That's right, that's right. But he never said, I'm a Baptist. That's right. that's true. Now, maybe you can show it to me. But what I read, he was baptized right. by John. That's right. But he never said, I am a Baptist. That's right. That's right. Well, why are you glorying in a name that the master never used? Well, I'm first Baptist. Well, I'm glad I'm second. But black folk is in the third Baptist church. See, now, brothers, it's not a bad name. But it becomes a bad name when you use it to define yourself against your brother who's a Methodist. Right, right, right there. That's right. Now, Jesus, when we read it, did he ever say, I am a Methodist? But he did say, I am the way. That's right. The truth. And the life. Come on here. Preach now. See? So don't get into your sect or denomination and then divide the flock of Christ where you have no
power Come on here. to challenge the world of Satan. So your world revolves around the mosque and the church with no power to affect real change outside of the parameters of your church, your mosque, your synagogue, or your anipi. Now what we need is power, yes. power. to change reality. Yes. Not be victimized by reality and then hide in our churches and get a nice organ going and the band hitting it. Come on. Hit it. Come on. <laughs> but the master never had a choir. You don't need one when you've mastered the word. You don't need a band to strike up to get the people all fired up when you got the word. When you understand the power of the word that you think you have. The mosques are like, well, Jesus called these places whited sepulchers. But in them are the bones of dead men. Yeah, it could be a mosque. It's a sepulcher. Yes, 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 sir. Where are you going? I'm going to the mosque. Mm. Why are you going? Well, I'm supposed to go. <laughs> God told me to go. <laughs> what are you going to do when you come out? Same thing I did before I went in. <laughs> and what was that? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I smoked reefer before I went in. I can't wait till the prayer's over so I can smoke some more. I got drunk. I partied on Saturday night. I fornicated on Sunday morning. And then sang in the choir. I know God forgave me. I mean, just look at, look at this sickness that has engulfed the world call religion a powerless religion not the religion of prophet Muhammad because he did something with religion Christ did something with religion come on So what's wrong? As we said last night, and I'll repeat it today, you know, the Quran has a very beautiful uh, expression of Satan and God having a conversation. And God is letting us in on the conversation. We would never have known it went on. So the Quran say, here, listen to this. Come on in and I want you to hear what, what God and Satan are talking about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when we opened the book and started reading, we went right there. Yes. And Satan is pleading to God. He said, respite me till the day when they are raised. Who is the they that got to be raised? Wow. See, it's humanity. Yeah. It's you. It's me. We're not raised in consciousness yet enough to challenge this world right. and set up one better. That's right. Beautiful. Now listen, listen, listen. Beautiful. Come on, come on. Now you see I didn't have no notes. No, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. And 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 I, you are my notes. This is what God is telling me to say. Not, not that I'm hearing a voice in my, and they say, oh, we got to get him some pills because he's hearing voices. No, I'm not a liar nor a cheat, but I'm an instrument. And what a blessing to be an instrument 
of God for the good of his people. And everyone in here are his people. Now, where was I? Yeah, thank you, thank you. So here, respite me. Don't, don't make me known. Don't, don't expose me. Don't pull the cover off of me just yet. Respite me till the day when they are raised. And God says, surely you are of the respited ones. Then Satan comes back. Thank you. He says, well, I'm going to come after them. The same they that have to be raised. Satan says, I'm coming after them, but I'm coming after them in your straight path. So what is the straight path of God? It is his word. Mm -hmm. It is his way. Yes. So he's going to enter through religion. Yes. Mm. Mm. Come on here. Mm. And then he says, I'm going to come at them come from on. before them, from behind them, from their left side, from their right side. And I'm going to make all of them deviate. Deviate, Good God of deviate from what? Mm. See, when you deviate from the natural path, mm. you deviate from life itself. Yes, sir. Mm. So this world in which we live is styled in scriptures as death. Yeah, mm. that's right. It's called death because when Adam rebelled against God, oh. and look at this, as by one man, mm. Not a spirit, but a man with a contrary spirit. See? As by one man, sin entered into the world, and death came also by sin. So all have sinned. So all of us, listen to me good, all of us are dead. Dead, yes. The spirit is dead in the flesh and you are buried in the flesh and the desires of the flesh but respite me till the day when they are raised you're not raised until you become a master of the flesh that your spirit lives in Oh boy. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> I better take some water for this fire. <laughs> Man. Now you think about this. See? I'm going to come at them from before them, from behind them, from their left side, from their right side. I'm going to come like this. I'll go in front of them. Mm -hmm. And I'll sow some evil seeds. And if they are truth bearers, I'll come behind them and eat up the truth that they speak. Mm -hmm. I'll come from the right side posing as their friend. Mm -hmm. Or I'll come from the left side as a real open enemy. Mm -hmm. And as I come at them from all these sides, they'll never be able to recognize me. And I'll have them all deviating. Good God so Muslims, we've deviated from the prophet. Don't tell me that you're straight. That's real. Christians, you've deviated from Jesus Christ. Yes. Jews. You have deviated from the prophets. Buddhists, Hindus, Zoroastrian. It don't make no difference what you call your religion. It's who you are underneath that name. Mm. 
It's what you do underneath that name that defines who you really are. So God intervening in our affairs has to kind of straighten this out. Yes. Well, well, I'm, I, I, I'm glad I'm not a Christian and I'm, I'm not a Muslim and I'm not a Jew. Well, what are you? Well, I am something. <laughs> Just confused. Yes. That's the something. Yes. God is not the author of confusion. If he made all these religions, we could charge him. What's wrong with you, God? You say you're the author of peace and not of confusion, but how are we a Jew, a Christian, a Muslim, a Buddhist, a this, a that? All in your name. And we killing each other in your name. We've messed up the world in your name. Satan has had a great time. And so far it looks like he's the winner. Only momentarily. Because the day of the respite for Satan is over. God has come. The Mahdi is present. The masquerade is over. Yes. As Isaiah the prophet said, the bed is too narrow and the cover too short for you to hide yourself now. Oh. And the Quran says when truth comes, falsehood vanishes and falsehood is forever a vanishing thing. Now, I want to talk to Muslims, Christians, and Jews just momentarily. I want you to look at all your denomination and all of our sects in Islam and all of the breakaways in Judaism. See? When Moses was present and the Israelite prophets were present, you weren't as divided and messed up as you are. When Jesus was here, there was one community. That's right. How come you're so many? And look at all the names you call yourself. And the last one I just want to bring to you. <clears throat> In all the I am's that Jesus mentioned. He never said once, I'm a Christian. The followers of Jesus became known as Christians at Antioch. And these were the enemies of Christ giving you a name. Like when they first made reference to us, they called us the black Muslims. Right. We didn't call ourselves no black Muslims. That's right. We were Muslims. That's right. But the enemy called us black Muslims. Yeah. Well, anytime we were called black in America, yes, sir. that's with fighting words. <laughs> you could call me a nigger, just don't call me a black nigger. <laughs> now, don't be offended because I use the N word. I use it in a wise way. So I can crush it in a wise way with the help of God. We never had to think of color. We are what we are. I mean, imagine in a flower garden, a rose saying, Man, I'm red. <laughs> You ain't quite the rose that I am with your yellow self. <laughs> <laughs> and the white rose start talking, well, just a moment. <laughs> I'm better than all of you because 
I'm white. See how stupid we sound? Roses get along. Make a beautiful bouquet. My God. The earth is white over here, brown over here, red over here, yellow over here, black over here. The planets show up different colors. They not arguing. You know, I, 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 I'm the blue planet. Right, right. Oh, shut up. Well, I'm the red planet. See? And here you are, blood in a crypt, killing yourself over colors. Look at how stupid. Human beings have been made because of Satan's intervention in our lives. As a white person with a black dog. I thought you hated black. <laughs> Not this black dog. <laughs> and here you come with your black self and your white dog. <laughs> it's not about color. That's it's about your preference. You see, white people made something about color. That's right. That's right. Because they were the first yes. white people on our planet. That's right. Mm. Yes. Mm. And they were given privilege to rule yes, sir. for a season. Yes. Yes, sir. That's true. Yes, sir. That's true. And bigger than the season for a divine yes, sir. reason. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. Mm. Mm. My Lord, love it. Mm. Yes. Mm. God, I'm getting excited. <laughs> mm. So all of these terms Names that we call ourselves. Look, look how we sound. I am Jamaican. <laughs> well, I'm from Barbados. I'm a, a Barbadian. Oh, I'm a Panamanian. Oh, I'm Egyptian. I'm Sudanese. I'm from Kenya. Oh, really? And you use these definitions to define and limit who you really are. Wow. Mm. That's Any defining is a limitation yes, on right. you. Yes, sir. That's right. Though. Unless it's a true definition. Oh, yes. Come on. Some little plot of ground. And you're going to say that's who you are? Mm. No, brothers and sisters. That's madness. madness. Wow. The earth is one. So the scripture says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So if you want to go to China and die, that's up to you. But the earth in China is not going to say you can't be buried here. Where are you from? <laughs> You're like these silly white people. We die, they die, you can't be buried in the cemetery alongside us. Mm. That's, that's how sick racism is and white supremacy has made white people. Yes. You're not well. Yes. If you think like that, you're sick. Yes. And they don't have no medicine to heal you. No. That's why God had to come. That's and the right. books say there's healing in his wings. Yeah. Now, I know this is the time of same-sex marriage. Oh, mm. Come on, speak on. Speak on. Oh, is it getting hot in here? <laughs> <laughs> now, look. I'm not speaking against a person who is homosexual or lesbian or transgender any more than I'm speaking against the fornicator, the adulterer. You know, we're all from the Creator. These things that have been used to define us have limited who we really are. So now, 
I want to get married. Yes. Not Adam and Eve. Adam and Steve. Now, is that okay? See, am I homophobic? Or am I true to what the scriptures say? We're not afraid of lesbians. Heck no. We're not afraid of people who want to dress up like a woman. That's your preference. But we are looking at you. That's right. <laughs> and there was a time if you were that you hid. Yes, sir. Oh, I, uh, I'm in the closet. <laughs> and you know you dump a lot of stuff in the closet and <laughs> close the door when you don't want people in your business. Because yeah. nobody should get in your closet unless you let them in. Yeah. Right, right. So when they say I've been in the closet, well, somebody opened the closet door, all right. Yeah. Now people are coming out believing that they're born. <laughs> See, nature don't make mistakes. Can you imagine a homosexual bird? <laughs> now they might have a wing broken or a leg broken, but somebody interfered, you know. But for a male bird to want to cohabit with another male bird, how in the heck will the bird species multiply? Come on, talk about it. Come on, talk about it. Now you got male blades of grass, female blades of grass. God haven't made no mistake. That's right. A male blade of grass saying, oh, I, I like them. Oh, look at this. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Look, God loves you. I don't care what your condition is. He has a remedy for unnatural behavior, immoral behavior, unethical behavior. Yes, sir. That's right. Because all of this has contributed to your short lifespan. Now look, there are trees right here in California, redwood trees. Some of them are 1,000, 1,200 years old. Have you ever wondered how a tree could live 1,200 years and man and woman are the glory of God and can't get to 100? That's right. That's right. Think, I mean, think with me. You open your Bible and it talks about the Long livers, 400, 500, mm -hmm. 600, 700, 800, 900 years. you saying, oh, that can't be real. That ain't real. No, it's not real, definitely in our life. That's right. But it's real. Yes, you got turtles, 400 years old. Come on. Turtles. turtles. And you are the glory of God. And you senile in your 60s. Mm. Dementia can't remember who, who what, where, when. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's something wrong. And it's not your fault. It's just that we are the victims of Satan playing in the field of our ignorance. Yes. Yes. See, the scripture says my people are destroyed. For what? Well, look outside. Are our people destroyed? Yes. Heck, you don't have to look outside. Look inside. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, we are. All right. Now, I've said enough on this divisiveness by color, by race, by tribe, by ethnicity. Look, the Quran says it like this. I created you into tribes and families that you may know one another. 
Now think about that. So here in my native uh, community, you have many tribes. See, Satan loves that. Because I can play one tribe against another. That's right. Yes, sir. But when you got a sitting bull, mm. Mm. Oh. <laughs> see, he, he wasn't into tribe. That's right. He wanted to see all That's the right. tribes come together. That made him a dangerous man. Yes. And anybody that wants to unite the family of Christ, yes. Yes. you're a dangerous man. Yes. But if you got a big church, Mega church. Mm. Thousands of people coming. Con collection basket full. Mm. Sing another song while we get some more. <laughs> as long as that's where your world is, that's where your world is. That's not Jesus. Jesus never built a house. He taught in the synagogues. Where did you find Jesus? On the highways and the byways. Oh, that's right, that's right. Talking to the people. That's right. See, as long as we stay in the Mars, you know, we're in the Mars, we have our Juma prayer service, we have the month of Ramadan, and we, at Iftar, we break bread together. Yeah, that's great, great, great. Mm. But is that your world? Mm. Is that your world? Islam is not a religion. It's a complete way of life that produces a world. This day have I completed my favor on you and perfected for you your religion. And I've chosen for you Islam as now don't walk by as as a religion why because we're in a world of religion God came into a world of religion so he gives you one that is not that but it comes as that wow. to in that wow. now listen 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 oh you gotta walk with me reverend see I know it's hard but look I'm gonna give you a little kingdom story with the help of God see why you think the master said except you become as a little child you can't enter the kingdom of God mm. well let's stop a minute you a grown man grown woman all your life you've been in the world mm. and many of the world mm -hmm. so when Jesus comes on the scene you're already made into something mm. that's why the Bible says you're born in sin and shaped in iniquity so when Jesus come he got a work to do wow. he got to break you down in the way you are and build you up in the way you really want to be that's the work brother <laughs> who will abide on the day of his coming for he shall be like a refiner's fire and like fuller's Soap. Soap? Well, how are you going to take a bath and don't have soap? You just let water run over funk. And grab you a little deodorant. Sprinkle some stuff on you. Smell good for the moment. But there's something about funk. It keeps on coming on through. People say, you know, what is that? 
And if you've ever smelled yourself, yes. when you thought, you know, that everything was all right. <laughs> you know, see, the classroom of God is such a beautiful classroom because learning is really fun. See, God is not here to beat you up. He's here to build us up. See, but if he's like a refiner's fire, okay, this is a beautiful little plastic something. Okay, let a fire start. Stand back. Well, as long as the chemical component of this is confined in this, you don't smell it. But when fire touches it, mm -hmm. it starts breaking it down. Yeah. Then what yeah. the chemical composition of it begins to come up in the smoke of its burning, and then you can get sick just breathing. Wow. Yeah. But the fire will break it down. Yeah. Oh. Good. Yeah. So fire, see, I am, look at Jesus talking. Boy, 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 boy. I am the light of yeah. the world. Yeah. See, if Jesus is the light of the world, he's a new son. Yes. Mm. S-U-N. And the prophet in the Quran is called what? A light giving son. Look at that son out there. Is it fire? Yes, sir. It can warm you. That's right. It can give you life. That's right. And it can give you death. Fire. That's what he threatened this world with, fire. Well, right now, it's on fire. You can't even see it, but the smoke of its burning is going up. The institutions are coming down. We'll get into that tomorrow. But look, it's sufficient to say you have to, we have to become again like little children in the presence of the Messiah, in the presence of the Mahdi. The Mahdi is the guide. He's a man born of a woman. But look at the power that it is written that the Mahdi would have. He would not only kill the swine and break the cross, the cross? Not my cross. See, the cross that my brother has on, that we have on, it has great meaning. But it wasn't the symbol that Jesus used. When Jesus was alive, the historical Jesus, the early Christians used a fish. Why? Mm. Why? When Jesus met Peter, Peter was fishing. He said, Peter, he said, if you come and follow me, what will he make him? Why use fish? Because there's all kind of fish in the sea. And our people are swimming in a sea of sin. Who will fish them out? See? A true follower of Jesus Christ is active as a fisherman. Once you become inactive as a fisherman, you are no longer a follower of Christ. Because all those people out there are in need of the real message of Muhammad, the real message of Jesus Christ, the real message of the Bible and Quran. Well, if you have it, what are you doing with it? You sitting on it? You happy with the little congregation you got? Enough to pay your bills? Well, no, uh, 
I had a Chevy last year, and I saw that Escalade, and uh, I want to, uh, I got to increase my car, so I got to help the congregation to give me a little bit more so I could pay that note. So what kind of preacher are we? What kind of imam are we? What kind of leader are we? That we fleece the people, but we give them nothing in return. See, Jesus, no, 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 no. I want you to listen. Boy, I'm on fire today. And I, I, I thank Allah so much for using me like this. See, Jesus said, oh, God, I'm going to lose my thought. Yeah. I'm sorry. The thought. You're talking about not giving the people anything. Yeah. But Jesus, well, I'll use this for now. He said, I am the good shepherd. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The good shepherd, good shepherd will lay down his life for the sheep. For the sheep. That's right. But those who are looking to fleece the sheep, see, they're called by the master hirelings. That's right. See? So many of us go into religion really with business in mind. I ain't got no job, so I think I'm going to start up a church. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not lying now. No, that's right. I'm not lying. That's right. <laughs> then you say, I got a call last night. <laughs> Maybe you did. But the question is, who was on the other end calling you? God don't call you to lie, to cheat. And to get people to pay your bills, God calls you to preach salvation. Yeah. Ah, the thought came back. Jesus said. <laughs> Jesus said, Peter, lovest thou me? Feed my sheep. Peter said, Master, you know I love you. He didn't stop there. He said, Peter, lovest thou me? Yes, Master, you, you asked me that already. Yes, I love you. He said, well, feed my sheep. And then the third time he asked him, lovest thou me? Feed my lambs. Mm. Now look. See, whenever three, it's mentioned three times, it's to drive a point home. And the point is this. See, if you're truly men and women of God, then your duty is to feed the flock of yeah. God the food that would resurrect their nature. Mm. Listen now, respite me till what? The day when they're raised. So, see, I can preach and have a good sermon. Mm. How did you do today, Rev? I, fine, see them all jumping up and shouting and just going up and down the aisle. <laughs> well, they got the Holy Ghost. I was, I was on fire. <laughs> But was your message transformative? Mm, right there. Was your message one that changed their lives right. and their behavior? Right. Was your message one that brought them out of darkness into the marvelous light of God? See, that's what a real shepherd would do. Yes. And when you become a real shepherd, yes. then the enemy is going to hate you. Now, what has Farrakhan done that they would talk about me as bad as they do? Now, you've been here with me almost an hour. 
wait a minute, this don't seem like the guy no, that I've been reading about. <laughs> Come on, make a play to him. I haven't heard hate yet. No, mm -hmm. That's right. Time. That's right. I haven't heard anti-Semitism right. yet. Right. 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 Yeah, but we don't hear all your words. We'll come tomorrow. Here's some more. <laughs> That's right. Tomorrow. <laughs> yes, sir.